Hey guys, Simcoder here, and today we're going to learn how we can uh, save the date uh, in, in which the the drive uh, has occurred, so that we can have an accurate representation of the date in our drive history, both for the customer and the user. And um, yeah, so we are going to use a timestamp for that, and more exactly, a uh, Unix time. And the reason we are going to do that is because Unix time is a sequence of characters that indicates a, a time to us. And that sequence of characters has a lot of information, including the time zone. So that's really important because you are doing um, uh, uh, an app that will work for anyone in the world. So a time zone is essential to that. And one other reason is because it is much easier to figure out which is the most recent one and which one is older than the other because it is a sequence of numbers and uh, the more recent the, the date is the bigger the number gets so you can make a simple comparison between two numbers and figure out which is more recent than the other which will enable us to make a better search engine for the, the history so let's get right into it and I'm going to grab the database and show you how the, the, what the, the number looks like because I already did this. And here we go. So in the history, uh, we have another child called timestamp, which looks like this. And this uh, is, the, it's, uh, is the representation of a certain date and time and uh, what's it called? Uh, the location, whether it is GMT, I already uh, I s just said that, but I can't remember whether it is GMT or any other time zone. There we go. So let's go get into the code. Let me just open up this. Okay, so the first thing that we need is another text view to show the timing. So let's grab item history. Item history, let it just load up. Okay. So in here, we can just copy the right ID, which we are going to, to let it be there forever. I'm not going to remove it, even though it doesn't look nice and it isn't something that you want to leave for the finished product. But for testing and to show you how it works, it is good to have it here. So actually, let's change the timestamp to just time. I mean, it makes more sense because we are dealing with time at this point and not timestamp and actually also this so yeah and now we need to add it to the array adapter to the the object to the view holder so we need to go over all of that so i'm going to open up first the object object yeah and let's call it time and I'm passing it, it as, as a string instead of the a number as I, as an integer, as I've said before that it is, uh, because we are going to make the the conversion between between Unix time and date. I'm going to teach you how to do that as well. So yeah, because a, a, num a sequence of numbers doesn't tell a lot to the user, but if you tell them a date, then that say, says something. So let's do this, and it is just uh, as just as doing the right ID. All you have to do is to make sure the names are different. So get time, set time, and then just copy and paste that everywhere that there's a right ID. Okay. So with the object, it is all done. I believe uh, now let's go inside the view holders and as you can see an error popped up because inside here it is expecting two uh, strings one for the right ID <coughs> and another for the time but we'll do that in a second first let's take care of the view holders and create another text view called time and as you can remember the ID is time as well I'm calling everything the same just to make it easy on you guys and oops what did I do okay nothing important now for the history adapter you just need to 
copy and paste the right ID holder. Instead, it is, didn't I, I call it time, okay, not timer, so time. And instead of get right ID, it is get time. Okay, so we are all done with this. Now, all that we have to take care of is both inputting the uh, timestamp into the, the history child and to um, get the, um, the time uh, timestamp from the, um, the database. So let me just check one thing. Okay, that's correct. So now let's uh, place the the timestamp inside the, the database. So let's go into driver map activity, which is where we save the information at the end. And as you can remember, we go here, this is the write status, and in record write is where we save everything uh, to the database. So let's go there. And inside here, we need another child. So let's just copy and paste that, call it timestamp and we are going to I'm going to separate these things and create another function because that way you can use it for whatever projects you are doing aside from this and it is really easy just to copy and paste it so not create getter uh, where was it okay Great method. Okay, this is what we need. It will be of the type long because it, it is a number and it is a long one, it isn't an integer. If you use an integer, it will probably be cut off because it doesn't have enough space for it to, to save to the, to the memory. So make sure you are aware of that. Let's call it timestamp. And now to get the timestamp, it is really simple. You just say, System dot current time millis divided by a thousand. Okay, and just return the timestamp. And this function here will give uh, a number like the one we saw here, so like this one which is the timestamp for that precise moment. And as I've said, it has a bunch of information, even though it is a small number, it is encoded into it. So yeah, that's all said and done with. We are, have now successfully saved, it is all we need. Now let's learn how we can show it, which is the, the interesting part, and how we can show it as a date that the user can understand. So yeah. First of all, we need another variable for this, and it will be of the type long, times 10, and let's initialize it. And the way we initialize longs is with zero, with a number, and then an L in front of it. And um, just one more thing, yeah. For the, uh, I have childs here that don't have a timestamp because I created them. Let me just see if you can, I can grab one. Yeah, for example, this one, it doesn't have a timestamp because I, we created this, uh, this uh, write before I implemented this code. And for this one, it will appear uh, the first uh, as being the 1st of January 1970, I believe, because it is the, the first date that the, the Unix time can, can find. It, it is the 0000, zero, 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 zero whatever. It is the absolute zero for the timestamp. So uh, time only begins at 1970. So for this uh, for this one, for example, yeah, for this one, because the the default one is zero, it will appear as the 1970 date. And just one aside, funny aside, uh, actually, uh, Apple had a problem not long ago with that because and only because. Um, some people decided to change the, the date to something previous uh, before 1970 or even, yeah, I, I believe it was before 1970. And because of that, the iPhone would break because uh, the Unix time doesn't work and it would give out a completely outrageous uh, date. 
So yeah, just a fun aside, let's get on with the code. And now we are going to do a for because we are using a single value event listener. And with this for we'll get uh, all the information inside the the write from the 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 write history. So we've done it before, so I'm not going to go in, in great detail inside it. So let's just call data snapshot dot get children. And now we can just get whatever we want related to these main childs. We can get all the childs inside there. So if child dot get key dot equals timestamp timestamp equals to long dot get value dot uh, not get value dot value of child dot get value dot to string and this is a way that we have to do it we have to first pass it to string and then to long to get exactly what we want and then to get rid of this error we simply say get date and this get date is a function that we'll do in a second and we will pass it the timestamp inside okay and it there's an error here because we now we are going to convert the timestamp into a date that the user can comprehend so let's create that function let's return a variable of the type date okay and take care of that so the first thing that we gotta do is to get an instance for the calendar and that will allow us to actually move on and to get the the date from it so import stats call it call and then say calendar dot get instance local and this is the lo the the location of the 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 user so we can get the default which is right here we can get the default and this will give us the the phones uh, local at the moment and this is to get the the time zone that he's in obviously so now call dot set time in millis time times a thousand because you remember we divided it earlier uh, and it isn't time it is timestamp sorry about that so this will uh, set the calendar time to this timestamp and then we can get from the calendar the exact date that uh, it represents so now string date equals to date format dot format and now this format if you've never used it before okay is uh, the string that represents the way that we want to get the 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 date from so if you want the days first and then months because I, I live in Europe and we use day month year or year month date uh, day and in the US obviously it is month day year which makes absolutely no sense let me just say that but yeah you can use it as well we just need to change the, the string accordingly so in order to use a date that makes kind of sense that like we do here in Europe we say day then month then year and you have to take care uh, to look forward to the capital letters because they do matter here um, so the best way is to just check the documentation on this if you want to make some kind of change to it that's what I would recommend so and then we just pass it to string and it is ah, it is given an error that it shouldn't be let me just take a look and I'll get back to you when I find out what it is
Okay, so I just imported the, the information again, the, and I don't know why it gave this error. If it gives an error like that, where this will appear underlined, simply go in here and delete the calendar and local and try to import it again, and maybe it will work that way. So yeah, for now it is all working. Let's just run the app and see if the date shows up. So the app finished loading successfully, let's go into history and I've already uh, made some trips and finished some trips so that you can see the, the date. And as you can see, we have here the, both the date and the hour that it was completed on. And yeah, it seems to work, be working just fine, everything is uh, good, so yeah, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this lesson, please do leave a like and subscribe. I hope to see you again tomorrow and ciao! Thank you.